Shalom, shalom. Greetings in the name of the Most High. And I pray that His Spirit is with you all. And I pray that even at, as I do this video for you all, that we all will gain some understanding, me including going through this. Um, i like to ch touch on Ezekiel chapter 7 verse 19. But I'm going to tie gold and silver and some of the economy into this video and the reason why i'm doing it is because there's a misinterpretation of many people especially the christian um christianity when it comes to what's the purpose of silver and gold and whether you should trust in it and and all of this other stuff so i would like to basically just use the scripture and give an understanding as far as the things that I've read when it comes to money and the Most High. I really don't think that the Most High has a problem with money. I think that he has a problem with the type of money that we use. So I'm going to use the scripture just to clarify a few things and I hope that this will actually give understanding to many of you. So I'm going to read Ezekiel chapter 7 first of all and then I'm going to show you basically um, what's going on from 6 so let me go to Ezekiel 7 and 19 because this is the one that you know most people use to justify why you shouldn't hold gold and silver it is written that they shall cast their silver in the streets and their gold shall be removed their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of Yah. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is, it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. So this is the scripture, this right here, is what most people use to justify why you shouldn't use silver and gold. And I will say this to anyone, that before you take what someone has to say as gold, it will be better if you read for yourself and get an understanding because this has nothing to do with the end time but it had something to do with our people and the way that they were going to be punished by the Most High aka the Israelites that were dwelling in the land of Israel at the time or in the nation of Israel at the time because of their disobedience and their trusting in different gods the Most High decided that he's going to punish them for this. So I'm going to start, go back to chapter 6, and then I'm going to go to chapter 7 and show you that there's a connection in all of this. So this is the prophet Ezekiel. He said, And the word of Yah came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face towards the mountains of Israel and prophesy against them. Not set thy face towards the whole world, but towards the mountains of Israel. And say, Ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of Yah Almighty. Thus saith Yah Almighty to the mountains and to the hills, to the rivers and to the valleys, Behold, I, even I, will bring a sword upon you, and I will destroy your high places. Then mention the whole world. And your altar shall be desolate, and your images shall be broken, and I will cast on your slain men before your idols. And I will lay the dead carcasses of the children of Israel before their idols, and I will scatter your bones round about your altars. In all your dwelling places, the cities shall be laid waste, and the high places shall be desolate, that your altars may be laid waste and made desolate, and your idols may be broken and seized, and your images may be cut down, and your works may be abolished. Now why is the Most High angry against them? Because he's a jealous God. Imagine you go and you find a woman that was filthy and dirty, cleaned her up, and made her the queen or the princess in your world. And then, after you have done this, she turns around and goes and cheats with every man on the block. You would be upset because the truth is, is you're jealous. That's exactly what you are. You would be jealous at that point, and jealousy leads to wrath or rage, which causes 
you know, you, you might want to kill her, basically. So, that's verse 6. I'm not going to read the whole thing. If you have a Bible, that's your job. So, we're going to go to chapter 7. Because I spent time reading mine. It says, Moreover, the word of Yah came unto me, saying, Prophet Ezekiel again, Also, thou son of man, thus said Yah Almighty unto the land of Israel, and end... The end is come upon the four corners of the land. Not the four corners of the earth, but the four corners of the land. Now is the end come upon thee, verse 3, and I will send mine anger upon thee, and will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense upon thee all thine abomination. Remember when the people sin, the land also suffers for it too. So when we defile the land, we defile ourselves, we also defile the land pollute everything around us you could go back in the book of numbers and read that i think it's chapter 29 but i might be wrong i'm just spitting things off my head right now it says and mine eye shall not spare thee neither will i have pity but i will recompense thy ways upon thee and thine abomination shall be in the midst of thee you shall know that i am yah thus say Yah almighty some people say adonai yah and evil only evil behold is come and end is come the end is come it watch it for thee behold it is come you will not read in this whole chapter where the most high is prophesying against the, the four corners of the earth or the whole earth he's speaking to his people that he set in a land that's supposed to serve him that are doing abominable things like the other nations so we're going to go down down here to verse 19 and read it again it reads they the children of Israel shall cast their silver in the streets and their gold shall be removed their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of Yah they shall not satisfy their souls neither fill their bowels because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity why is he saying this? Because my ancestors or my people, the Israelites, they used to go and take their silver and their gold and then send it to Egypt or to Babylon or to any of these other nations around to come and help them when they know specifically that their punishment is not from man but from the hands of the Most High. So they will trust in their silver and in their gold and in the military and all these things to deliver them but the most High is saying that you're going to cast these in the street this was at that time when he's getting ready to pour his wrath upon them he's going to basically make them cast them in the street because at that time they're going to be fleeing from the enemy they ain't going to have no time to pay the enemy to save their life because the enemy that he's going to save sent after, sent after them is not going to regard silver or gold He's not going to regard any money. So this here, this scripture here, you could read it for yourself. Verse 20 says, And for the beauty of his ornament, he set it in majesty. But they made the images of their abomination and of their detestable things therein. Therefore have I set it far from them. They took even the silver and gold and they made abominable things. All kind of symbols, phallic symbols, you name it. They made with this stuff and they worshipped it like as if it was him. And the truth is, is that's like a woman going and worshipping another man and don't give no reference to her husband. She deserved to be punished. She deserved to be put to death. You know, people don't want to hear this. They want to think that God is love. But the truth is, is with love comes correction. Now I'm going to show you where silver and gold is actually something that the Most High actually sees as honest weight, honest money, and this is the things that those whom he loved were rewarded with for even purchases and also to sell out him and all. So I'm, I'm going to show this with the remainder of the scripture and then we're going to touch on some modern day things. So hold on for me while I pull these scriptures right now. So let's look at the word silver and see what it means in scripture. 
So when I pull up the word silver, the word silver is going to bring a lot of scriptures. And Abraham was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. Now Abraham is a friend of the Most High, and these are the things that he was rewarded with. And unto Sarah he said, I have given thy brother a thousand pieces of silver. Behold, he is to thee a covering of thy eyes. Unto all that are with thee, and with all other, thus she was reproved. And we remember this is the story of Abimelech. Genesis 23, 15. My Lord, hearken unto me. The land is worth 400 shekels of silver. What is that betwixt me and thee? This is with Abraham when he was trying to buy the cave of Machpelah. He said, bury therefore thy dead. Right? Verse 23 and 16. And Abraham hearkened unto Ephron. And Abraham weighed to Ephron the silver which he had named in the audience of the sons of Heth, 400 shekels of silver, current money with the merchant. And Yah had blessed my master greatly, and he has become great. We know that Abraham sent his servant to find a wife for his son Isaac. He says, and he had given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and manservants and maidservants and camels and asses. So here it is. Abraham's servant is telling, you know, um, Sarah's brother and family that the Most High has blessed his master greatly. And the things that he has blessed him with, right, has made him great. And he has given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and manservants and maidservants camels and asses right these are the things that Abraham had that made him great now I believe Abraham is one of my forefathers and I believe that he's great he was great in his time and I believe that I might not be able to walk fully in his footstep but I'm going to try my best to actually do it because I want to become great just like Abraham. To be blessed by the Most High just like Abraham. I'm sorry, but that's one of the greatest gifts I would love to actually covet. And walk in, walk in the footsteps and make sure that in the end, the Most High see me as his friend. You know? It says, And the servant brought forth the jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment and gave them to Rebekah. He also gave to her brother and her mother precious things. So here it is that the payment... For this woman was all of this honest money, honest, honest weight, honest, just money. Just like when he bought the land, he paid honest money. Or what did it say? Current money with the merchant. That's what he did. Current money. So we're going to take a little more look at the word silver. So let's focus on this verse right here. Genesis 23 and 16 for a minute. I'm going to pull it up. Genesis 23 and 16. And I'm going to... Let me expand this back. I'll minimize that. Pull that back across. Let me expand this back. And we're going to do the plus on it. And we're going to see silver. So I'm going to click on the word silver. And then I'm going to... Pull this up, and we're going to see the word is kesef. It's the silver from its pale color by implication money. So the word silver, according to the Most High, is money. It's a price, silver, and then it says ling, okay? And the number for that is H3701. So silver is money. So let's put that back, and let's go to the word Uh, current so let's look at the word current it says to cross over use very widely of any transition right specifically to cover in copulation to alienate to alter at all beyond to bring over to carry over right 
this is the word current right it said to metal overrun make partition pass through proclaim it says provoke to anger to put away rage raiser of taxes now isn't that isn't that funny to remove a send over to set apart shave right it says also make to transgress it says translate to turn away faring man be wrath so the word current when you look at it is where we get the word currency from so let me put that back the word current it says current money with the merchant so at that time silver was actually current money meaning that it was actually just money so Abraham paid Ephron just money or honest money right with the merchant but we just looked at the word current and the word current means to transgress it says raise of taxes to translate now if you look at what's happening in society today right when we look at the word currency we see that guess what let me click on it again the word the, the number is h5674 it says abba right that's the hebrew word if you really think about it currency actually is unjust it provokes the most high to anger what does it do it meddles it overruns it makes petition if you think about it today they take currency and they do what they lobby Congress they basically change the laws the banksters they use currency to manipulate to steal or wealth they use the same currency to actually negotiate as far as the taxes that they're gonna pay if you look at your dollar bill what does it say it says this note is legal tender for all debts public and private a note is a debt that has to be paid so you take in a debt to pay a debt so this note which is a debt is legal tender for all debts which is basically a note both private and public and what you do you pay interest or taxes on this thing you see what I'm saying it translates and it turns away and it says faring man and it says be wrath what does it turn away it turns away both you and me even our spouses take us to court for this thing marriages everything is destroyed when it comes to this currency but if the money was just the, 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 the government or the Fed couldn't print as much currency as they wanted to because the currency would have to expand as much as the money which is the silver and the gold but they have us ignorant they have us people ignorant and not knowing exactly what is going on so we just saw that just in this one little verse I gave you so much information so much information you know and then you know I touched on Ezekiel and I showed you that the, the chapter with Ezekiel had nothing to do with our time as far as protecting ourselves now I could even go and I could show you in the book of of Genesis which was the first the first great recession of the entire time back in the back in the back in the Bible so I'm gonna sh type in money fail let me see if I if it is gonna put up oh money not money so money fail F A I L S okay so when when money let's see if it's gonna come up this is bible search all word let me just put money then i always want to act stupid every time every time you you're trying to bring the truth out these stuff act stupid let me see if the old testament will have it let me see let me go to the time of Joseph let's see if we can find it 
Let's see. I know it's closer to the end. Okay, here it is. <clears throat> Genesis 47. So, let me show you something. This was the first Great Depression, right? I'm going to read from verse 47 and 12. It says, And Joseph nourished his father and his brethren and all his father's household with bread according to their families. And there was no bread in all the land, for the famine was very sore. So the land of Egypt and all the land of Canaan faded by reason of the famine. And Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan for the corn which they bought. And Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. And when money failed in the land of Egypt, and believe me, we're in the land of Egypt today, and the money is going to fail, that U.S. currency is going to fail. And when money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, and all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in thy presence? For the money faileth. And Joseph said, Give your cattle, and I will give you, and I give you for your cattle if money fail. That's verse 16. And they bought their cattle unto Joseph. And Joseph gave them bread in exchange for horses and for the flocks and for the cattle of the herds and for the asses and fed them with bread for all their cattle for that year. When that was ended, they came unto him the second year and said unto him, We will not hide it from my master. How that our money is spent, my Lord also had our hordes of cattle. There is not aught left in the sight of my Lord, but our bodies and our lands. Wherefore shall we die before thine eyes, but we and our land? Buy us and our land for bread, and we and our land will be servants unto Pharaoh. Give us seed that we may live and not die, and that the land be not desolate. And Joseph, verse 20, bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh, for the Egyptians sold every man his field, because the famine prevailed over them, so the land became Pharaoh's. Now when you read Revelation, it talks about the souls of men was even sold. That in that time, the famine that came, this, this, this end of the world famine was so great that people sold themselves as it was in the beginning. As it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. That's what Bob Marley said, right? So, you see the very same thing is going to be repeating itself. The money is going to fail. And believe me, the money is going to fail. And they're setting it up. I don't know whether they're going to use Bitcoin or they're going to just crash the dollar. But they're going to force us into one thing. And that's going to fail too. Because they need everybody to be under the one umbrella. Just like the Tower of Babel. Where they can basically have the devil at the top controlling everybody. Believe me, the money is going to fail. The dollar is going to fail. You know, get ready for a new currency. 2018, they have the Phoenix standing upon a pile of fiat currencies burning. And the Phoenix is riding out the ashes with a big old golden medallion around its neck. Believe me, the money is going to fail. So, the only money that was ever honest to begin with had to be just weights and measures. The Most High Himself could not be deceived with money that wasn't that wasn't honest he couldn't be if he is all holy he can't be corrupted with our unholy money they couldn't use currency to sell him jeremiah couldn't buy that field without using honest money see the reality of it is is whatever is supposed to be purchased from the most high because he's honest has to be honest also and if we say that we're the children of the most high the truth is is our wealth has to be honest too because we can't be rewarded with something that is tied to every evil in the world. You know. I'm not saying to go out there and worship silver and gold. All I'm saying is guess what. If the most I say has to be just weight and just measure. You have to go out and basically take the fiat that is corrupted. And buy honest stuff. Because in the end. Guess what. It says honesty is the best policy. Nobody ain't going to take your fiat in the end. 
because the truth is they know it's corrupted I just showed you what currency is the word current is actually short for currency and it shows you that it's something that's corrupted you understand and that's why they call it currency because they know it's corrupted they know that it's debt that is used in paper fiat to pay debt so let me pull up the words just wait and hopefully you know it, it, it shows up this time because like I said every time if I was talking about porn you know this thing wouldn't fail but the fact that I'm pulling up scriptures you know I got I got a problem right here it, it want to act stupid so just wait Leviticus 19:36. it says just balances just weights a just ephah and a just him shall you have I am Yah your Elohim which brought you out of the land of Egypt now we know we came from Egypt and they use corruption and deception to enslave us the same way that you they're using corruption and deception with fiat currencies to enslave us Proverbs 16 11 it you know the most I speak once and he speak twice a just weight and balance are yours all the weights of the bag are his work all the weights of his of the bag are his works remember the one that deceived them called Judas was always walking around with a money bag <laughs> inside of that money bag he had to have just weight and just measures as that money bag would basically be thrown into the, 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 the Dead Sea or someplace he couldn't walk around with fake money even Zacchaeus himself you know when he went to Mosai he was speaking to him he said you know if I steal from a man I restore it unto him but people think Zacchaeus was a thief so they said you know he was a thief because he was doing his job the truth is is guess what if I selling you a bag of mangoes and you agree to pay twenty dollars and you could have get a bag of mango for five dollars who's the fool I'm not the fool I'm a businessman I'm gonna make that twenty dollars because that's what I want for it the truth is is you could have go down the road and buy that thing for five dollars so your ignorance is what's gonna cost you and just like the ignorance of not knowing and understanding Ezekiel 719 is gonna cost a lot of people to basically be without when the time come and they're gonna accept the mark but the truth is look at Jacob and his family they were able to go down to Egypt and purchase corn and grain and survive through the famine because the Most High had already set up and gave them an understanding hey you don't trust in the silver and gold but I'm going to show you when it's going to be used for it's going to be used as a at, at, at a time to save that physical structure that your soul which worship, worships me dwells in you check and that's exactly what they do and when they went down down there they met Joseph and Joseph gave them back the money because that money also was used to basically do what to trade and to keep many of uh, many of them from basically being enslaved by these very Egyptians I mean when you look at it it all makes sense you know I'm not gonna tell anyone to go out out there and buy gold and silver but I, I'm just laying down the evidence right here using scriptures I'm not here to convince anybody about the famine to come y'all could see it you know out there in Las Vegas and in places they they got a water problem it's so hot out there they got a water problem they ain't gonna tell the truth that China has been sending in badges out there and they've been sending the water to China to bottle and send it back over here and then plastic bottles are killing us you know that they've been draining those freshwater ponds out there just to make money to keep the US dollar afloat you know all of that stuff they're not going to tell you but who am I to tell you that anyway it's up to every man to go up there and look the evidence up for themselves just like it's every man to basically go out there and read the scriptures and pray to the most high for understanding like I said I'm not here to convince anybody to go out and buy silver and gold this whole thing was basically to justify the ignorance in Ezekiel 719 and to prove that the most high calls silver and gold money what he calls silver money so I'm going to go to Haggai now the book of Haggai and I'm going to show you who it belongs to so in our ignorance like I said many times we don't understand and I'm going to read this 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 right here <clears throat> I think it's in chapter 2 let me go ahead and read read it and see it says let me read from first one it says 
Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your seal houses, and this house lie waste, which is the house of the Most High? Now therefore thus say, Yah, Yah of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much, and bring in little. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put into a bag with holes. Now, your 401k, your, um, what you call them, your bonds, your, your money market account, even some of these company stocks, they are all bag with holes. Because guess what? If you don't own it, you don't own it. You don't, if you don't hold it, sorry, you don't own it. The most I said, thus say you have hosts, consider your ways. He said, go up to the mountain and bring wood and build a house. And I will take pleasure in it. And I will be glorified, say Yah. Right? Let's go to verse 2. Chapter 2, sorry. Let's go down down here. He said, for thus say Yah's hosts. This is verse 6. Yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory, said Yah of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, said Yah of hosts. The glory of the latter house, which is a house to come, shall be greater than the former, said Yah of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, said Yah of hosts. My question to you all is, if the most I say in the silver is his and the gold is his, you really don't think that he's going to give it to his children, to his people, to those who follow the full steps of Abraham, like how he made Abimelech and them to bless Abraham. Abraham ain't dug one piece of gold out of the ground. He dug many wells and he stole the wells. But he ain't dug no silver and gold out of the ground. Yet still, the Most High made him wealthy. He was the wealthiest Israelite <laughs> until, uh, uh, what's his name again? Solomon. So, Whose footsteps should we follow? I'm going to take one scripture, one last scripture. And let's see what he says in Revelation. Right? Oh, yes, here it is. But let me let me search for it and make sure that what I'm saying is the right thing. Let me see if I make let me make sure. Let me see. Gold. And let me do it in the New Testament and see if it's going to come up. All right. Let's see. Let's go down to the end. Revelation. Yeah, it was in verse chapter 3. <laughs> All right. So, it says, And unto the church of the Laodiceans, Laodiceans right, these say, things say the Amen. What is the Amen? The Amen always come at the end of something, right? The faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of the Most High. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. Isn't that like how the church is today? I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing. And knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Beautiful. That thou mayest be rich. And white raiment that thou mayest be clothed. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye slave, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore and repent. The most I is saying to you, 
saying to us that in order to be rich, we need to buy gold tried by fire. In order to be rich, he said, what? I counsel thee to buy of me. And this is in red. So we know this is Yahushua speaking. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed. What is white raiment? You know, it's, it's, it's similar to a person going out and doing good deeds and trying to keep themselves from anything that's going to be corrupted or be abomination to the Most High. He said in verse 17 again, Because thou sayest I am rich and increased with goods. I hear so many people bragging about their 401ks and their pension and all of these things. They don't even know that their pension guarantee fund has been broke since 2009. I received a letter from AT&T telling me that these, the companies that they invest their pension in, like BlackRock and all of these companies, take great risk and my pension was at risk. I said, you know what? I might as well go ahead and take it now because I might not see it. And I was right because I got 70% of my money after taxes. But I guarantee you, those who won't get their pension and what's not, they're going to get 18%. You're going to get 30%, but then it's going to be taxed at 42%. So therefore, that's how I got 18%. You're going to get 30% of whatever money you have, and you're going to still have to pay maybe 48, 50% of it in taxes. So you're going to be around 18% by the time the government is finished with you. And that's if you get anything at all, because with hyperinflation, it's going to inflate all of that money away. I'm not being here to be an alarmist or be somebody a doom and gloom. Guess what? It's already set up. That's why the rich guys like Jim Rogers and them waiting for gold to go down to $1,000. Because really and truly, they could buy it all up for a few billion dollars. You know, but hey, that's in another topic. On my next video, hopefully I get time to do it. I'm going to talk about Turkey and the Thanksgiving Turkey. And... Um, which is carving up a gold and silver buying opportunity. So I hope that each and every one of you learned something from this. I wish that I could go on much further with this video, but and I hope that it recorded right. And I hope that each and every one of you stay healthy and strong and continue to sharpen your swords and read the words of the Most High and to pray to Him and to ask Him for forgiveness of your sins and to guide and lead you in your path of righteousness. And with this, I'd like to say Shalom, Shalom. I love you all and have a good night, have a good day or have a good morning, whichever time that you are watching this video. Shalom.